Yeah, definitely is. Hey guys, what's going on? Lucky here, hanging out with Mark, Gas Rats Customs right there. What's, what's up, up, Mark? Well, you're all white. you're a little more light skinned than you normally are. I don't know what's wrong with this camera. Hey, just got the uh, front tires for the uh, for Michael '66. We got a 255, 60, 15 in the rear. Put a 245 on the front. It had a uh, 255s all the way around. They were rubbing like crazy. I think the car just needs to be lowered a little, but we got to wait till we get all the bumpers and everything on. Full tank of gas, all the interior, and then put a little heat into the springs, driving the thing around. Let it settle to determine what the uh, what the right height, the final right height will be. But uh, yeah, they fit good. See, it's really shaping up. I drove it over here. We're in the other shop. This is a Chevelle Central. Lucky to ride Chevelle Central. Now, right now, we're getting ready to push the wagon back over to the other shop, pull the body back off the frame because HPI has hooked me up. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. HPI sent me their chassis kit. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty jazzed to get these installed. It boxes the frames, reinforces it, new trans cross member, there's a drive shaft loop in the back. It's got all the goodness. But I'm gonna stance the body straight up, put it back on my little uh, roll around dolly dilly bobber that I made. And uh, sorry, how about, uh, I've been I've been distracted momentarily. How about I get in and you push? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Man, I told you I drove the Chevelle the other day, right? No, you did you? Yeah, I drove it over here. Still has no oil pressure. Man, it sounds sweet. I don't know how much damage I did bringing it over here, but it was I think it was worth it. <laughs> I missed that car, but back to reality. Okay, what could go wrong? Uh, getting ready to uh, open the box of the HPI chassis reinforcement kit. I've had for a couple of weeks now. We just snatched the body off of the wagon. That's the wagon carcass right there. I'm gonna take this stuff out and lay it on the ground and uh, see what it looks like. And I'll tell you right now, I'm liking what I'm seeing. We put all the same stuff on that uh, on that uh, convertible we did, the La Monster that we took out to uh, Colorado and gave to Lincoln Tech. And then when we got it back, it was uh, in worse shape than it was when we shipped it. And then uh, the company took it and sold it. Um, pretty pretty jazzed. I'm pretty jazzed already. Those are the uh, stainless steel exhaust mounts. That's the boxing kit for the frame. Some more hardware. Oh yeah. I got a beanie. got a beanie. Thanks Don. She sent me a beanie. She's in Canada. All right, that's a pretty straightforward kit. These actually go like this. Uh, 
that is how it goes on the that is the driver's side flip the other one over that is the passenger side correct and trans cross member is completely adjustable, reversible, and this is the drive shaft rear reinforcement piece, I believe. Dude, it's nice. Yeah. That's actually upside down, but I think this actually goes like this. Maybe? I have to look at the instructions. Pretty solid, nice welds. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Okay, pretty jazzed. This looks so simple, even I can do it. All right. This should be funny. Enjoy it. Okay, that's a wrap on this thing. Um, things actually fit really well. I had to massage a couple of these plates just a little because the frame is a little round in the top. There's no doubt my frame is different from other frames. Uh, in the video I saw that HPI made, they cut those plates out. I opted just to keep them there. Um, I trimmed them back and pushed them in. When they're installed factory, they're uh, installed poorly. One thing you want to do when you're uh, fitting these things is, you can see right here, I actually rolled down the edge just a little bit, uh, put a little bit of an angle on that, and then uh, kind of massaged the top down a little on both sides, but it, it boxes in the lower control arm really well. So I'm very happy with that. Um, everything fits good. A couple things, um, there's a hole that goes all the way through the frame. You can see it right here. So moisture, gravel, sand, and crap can get inside there. Um, so I'm going to make a plate that goes underneath the frame that just bolts over that after the body's installed. And then in the rear, the factory frame actually goes in like this right here, and then it's capped here, which means everything is going to get caught up in that area. There's holes in the side, and instead of going through and welding up all those holes, um, I'm going to drill a hole underneath the frame right in the middle or it's the lowest point, which will be towards the inside, and uh, probably drill it um, probably a half inch hole on each side, just to let dirt, moisture, gravel, whatever, get out of there. And uh, I'm not gonna plug up the sides at all. I might put some tape on it once it's all on the car, but uh, I will make a cap, because that obviously, there's gonna be a lot of stuff getting funneled directly into the hole under the frame. 
you can see it right there. So I'll just make a little aluminum plate, drill and tap the frame right there, put four little screws, and uh, that should cut it down. Other than that, super happy with it. Everything fits cool. I did just like a HPI said, trim the round portion of the rear piece right there to make it fit because uh, the diameter is going to be a little bit different depending on how you set it all up. But very pleased with it. Turned out nice. Some of my welds are better than the stock weld. All of my, my worst weld is better than the stock welds. You can tell uh, if you get a Friday car or a Monday car by the welding. I actually took a part of 55 Chevy once and it was on the driver's side and they were stitch welding the two pieces of the frame together which means they're just holding a welder and just doing three inches, four inches, three inches, whatever. And it seems like they ran out of material on one side and uh, whatever they were using acted like a plasma cutter and literally just cut through the frame all the way to the back and it was starting to split open. And when I pulled the body off, I looked and I was just like, wow, broken frame. But that wasn't it. There was like no weld. It was like cut. It was, uh, yeah, pretty bad. But hey, it was 1957. I probably want to go have a stogie and drink some bourbon. Okay, that's it for the HPI chassis install. Super happy with it. Um, not only looks cool, but I'm sure it's going to work cool too. Getting ready to ship the frame down, send it back over to Yancey Sandblasting, have them sandblast it again, and, uh, and uh, paint it up, grind a couple of them welds, take some slag off, right? Stuff like that just irritates me a little. All right, you guys, thanks a lot for watching the video. Thanks for, always for subscribing, telling a friend, sharing, and uh, leaving comments. Appreciate you all. Stay safe. See you later.